Hi, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be using my ZWO AM5 mount with my Skywatcher 200P Newtonian telescope. Basically, I've recently bought uh, the counterweight bar and I thought I'd give the telescope mount a go uh, with something that's a, a lot heavier and a lot bigger to uh, manage compared to the Red Cat 51. So uh, if you want to hear more about how this uh, gets on and how well it works, then uh, keep watching. So here I am uh, setting up the mount. You can see that the mount is ridiculously light at about five kilograms. Uh, so nice and easy to just pick up and uh, Put down uh, store this in the house always set up which is nice and convenient used a few bits of uh, wood that i cut with uh, my chainsaw just to uh, balance out the weight on the grass so just fitting the counterweight uh, bar and the counterweights here uh, ready to put the telescope on and yeah just noticed that yeah where, where did all my hair go over the years um and now just uh, bringing out the scope itself so i think the scope probably weighs about the same amount if not more of um, the actual mount itself it's, it's definitely um, able to take this particular telescope but you can see here just sort of uh, working out thinking hang on a minute this doesn't quite feel balanced properly so I started to make some adjustments here uh, which is always a bit tricky to do with just two hands because you're trying to balance and hold the, uh, the heavy Newtonian telescope whilst undoing the, the, the mount bolt uh, without sort of everything toppling over, so it's quite a bit of a challenge, really. Still got it all done in the end, and uh, yeah, it was all ready to uh, ready to go. Uh, no balancing or anything needed because um, yeah, there was no need for this. So all I was doing here with the hand controller was uh, just slewing to roughly where I thought M51 was going to be in the night uh, just to do a bit of uh, testing to see um, how much it was going to be an issue with the scope hitting the mount. You'll see later on as well in the video, spoiler alert, it was a problem. Uh, no surprises there which is why they provide peer extensions in the first place. So after that finally I decided to uh, just see how stable the actual mount was. Uh, with the counterweights and so, so really what I'm checking here is that the weight of the telescope and the counterweights that I've got there uh, the actual whole assembly is actually fairly sturdy and it's not going to topple over that's the point of the counterweights at the end of the day it's not to balance the scope and make sure that guiding's nice and the, the motors aren't sort of pushing against the weight of the scope it's actually just to stop the whole thing from toppling over when it's at the extremes of um, meridian flip territory. So uh, the plan for tonight is to image uh, M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, uh, using my Skywatcher 200p Newtonian telescope, uh, but I thought I'd give the uh, ZWO AM5 a try. So you can see here, um, you've got the mount, uh, I've also got a couple of counterweights here just to make sure that um, the, the massive weight that we've got here doesn't tip the tripod um, off balance. So it's not required to actually balance the mount, it's actually required to balance the mount. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's just basically to uh, stop it from toppling over because uh, you can see the tripod legs here, they're not particularly um, wide, not particularly spread out, and therefore you just need um, a separate weight here to counteract uh, the big weight of the Newtonian. So uh, everything's all uh, looks okay. Um, you notice here as well I've not got a pier extension um, added to this tripod, I don't actually own one at the moment, um, but for the particular target that I'm imaging uh, where it's going, moving through the night sky, uh, I should be okay. Uh, as I should be, I'm going to uh, polar line and everything, um, slew over to the target and then just see what, what happens if I just then uh, manually uh, slew through the rest of the night 
and just see what happens around uh, meridian flip time but i'll probably either keep an eye on that or uh, the clouds might roll in by then so i'll have to give up anyway so uh, have to see how we get on but um yeah looking forward to seeing how the am5 copes with uh, this amount of weight on it uh, it should be interesting to see so let's have a quick walk around this rig so i've already mentioned the uh, zwo am5 uh, bought the uh, counterweight extension bar uh, cost 50 pounds or something crazy for a piece of steel um, I've reused the counterweights that I've got from my EQ5 Pro mount uh, they seem to be the right diameter that fits in that pole so that's kind of fantastic there um, carbon fibre tripod I've got my jackery here um, just just because really I could run an extension lead but it's still worth um, just trying things out and see how long they last and things uh, got the Skywatcher 200p Newtonian telescope, so that's a 200 millimeter aperture, 1000 millimeter focal length. At the top here, we've got the ASI Air uh, Plus, just kind of screwed to the uh, the fixing. Not really, not really great. But I could do with getting an extra support bar uh, just to put on the top, another dovetail bar or something like that. But yep, maybe later. Uh, guide scope. Uh, 120 mm mini there handling the guiding uh, no joys of uh, 2600 duos in this rig so uh, down here for uh, focusing i've fitted the uh, zwo eaf um, so that hands handles all of the auto focusing which is quite nice and then the imaging camera is the asi 533 mc pro and then i've got a optolong l pro filter in the filter drawer there that's pretty much it so i uh, just need to get polar aligned now so i've got the asi air app open now now uh, you can see here i need to select the mount zwo am5 at the top 1000 millimeter focal length 120 for the guide scope 533 everything's all detected there no filter wheel uh, first things first is just make sure that we've got some kind of focus doesn't need to be really accurate, but it needs to be good enough that I can do polar alignment. Uh, that's pretty good. Good enough, I think. So we tap on preview and then on polar alignment, hit play. So we hit next for the uh, scope to now rotate 60 degrees. Done, takes another image, plate solves, ready to polar align. It's going to be a bit of a challenge now. Balance that down there. So the previous um, scope that I've had on here is a Red Cat 51, which is significantly lighter. So it's going to be interesting to see how things fare um, moving the mount around with so much extra weight on one thing I'd say about actually doing this is everything is nice and firm and responsive there's no uh, free play which seems to be pretty good so when I actually make an adjustment in either direction uh, it just actually moves straight away which is good so as I get closer to doing polar alignment I'm going to need to Tighten up the tighten up the clips on the side because I know that if you don't do that, it then pushes it out of polar alignment again. So just tighten those up a little bit, refresh to see if that's made any difference. It's the tricky part here, getting this as accurate as possible. I want to see what the uh, the guiding's like with um, with this kind of weight on the mount. So I want to give it a good chance by getting good polar alignment here. Tighten up the uh, clutches a little bit more. I think this is probably about as good as I'm going to get. Let's leave it at that. Hit finish. There we go. Over to preview. So what I'm going to do now is um, slew over to M51. So I've already got that selected there uh, from imaging. Uh, so for anybody else following along, 
um, just type M51 into the object number. So it has the has the Messier catalogue, um, but if you type Whirlpool Galaxy, sadly, it doesn't really pick it up, which is a shame. So uh, select the object, hit go to. I'm just keeping an eye on what's going on with the telescope and that it's not going to hit the tripod legs. So whilst we're waiting for that first sub to come through, uh, let's take a look at the guiding. So tap on the graph. So it's actually looking pretty respectable really. Uh, you've got 0 0.57, 0 0.58 on right ascension and 0.53 on declination. Uh, let's extend the time frame so you can see the corrections it's made and things like that. So that's so you can turn that on and off and you can see see where the changes are. And it looks like there's more more corrections and right ascension than declination. Um, and that will be shown I guess from the error as well. So now now jumped up to 1.3, so I guess more recently 0 0.73, then 0.95 and 0.13, so I think it's it's getting better. So that's quite nice. Let's go back to the image now. So this is the first sub that's actually come through. Uh, let's have a look at the star detection, seeing the size of the stars. A three point. 2.75 arc seconds or 3.55 overall but uh, there we go we've got the um, M51 there a reasonable amount of detail there uh, I do wonder whether I could really do with actually cleaning my mirror in the Newtonian now because it's uh, beginning to get a little bit grubby uh, I do wonder whether that really affects the, uh, the definition that you get from the images it must do, but um, yeah, I've not had a chance of cleaning it yet. I'm going to wait until galaxy season has finished, um, and then when summer kicks in, uh, do a bit of telescope maintenance, because there's limited things that you can really do when you've got um, only astronomical twilight uh, in this part of the UK. So it does kind of look a bit ridiculous when you look at the size of the scope, and then you see the mount that's actually just controlling the sheer amount of weight. Um, everything looks like it's actually coping very nicely, which is partly to be expected. But you always want to uh, always want to actually try these things out and and see what happens in in real life. Um, but yeah, everything looks uh, pretty good and pretty solid. Uh, you would have seen me just playing about when uh, setting this up. So I've got the counterweights over here just to make sure that that's actually giving the whole setup a sturdy feel. I'd sort of rock it backwards and forwards just to see whether or not that actually moved it or not, and pretty solid. So uh, I think this is all pretty good. I can just leave this for a bit now. I'm just come round to where the telescope is and the tripod legs. Actually, I forgot that I was gonna do a, uh, a quick testing of the, the slewing of the mount looks like the kind of angle that's going to come round there's a high likelihood that it's gonna it's gonna hit those legs yeah if i'm going to use this setup quite a bit i'm gonna need to get that pier extension really so that's definitely not going to work um so it's not quite at a meridian or meridian flip time However, it's very close to the tripod leg, so that's not going to work for me.